So welcome to my reaction to the new Nintendo Direct. Yes, it finally happened. Nintendo said, hey, we're doing a Nintendo Direct tomorrow, and everybody was in. We're all been waiting for this for a long period of time, and I've lost my voice, but I'm still doing this because I'm super excited because this happened. This happened right here. And I'll ask you guys, what did you think of this Nintendo Direct? Did it live up to your expectations, or did it direct you to the door? Now, they showed Mario and Luigi, and I was like, okay, I was expecting this. I was expecting like a Superstar remake or something like that. That looks good. And they brought us Mario and Luigi Brothership, and I'm like, Brothership? I wanted to say Brotherhood. But I, what I saw here was very exciting, and I was like, this looks really good. And the Mario and Luigi games have always been so charming, and to see this in like full 3D this way, I was really liking it. I was like, I don't know what this game is, but look at these boss encounters, looking at all the environments. This looks really exciting, and it's something that I'm really gonna be into. <laughs> Next up, the Nintendo World Championship was shown, and I wanna say, I have pre-ordered the special edition. I'm not a speedrunning guy, but I'm like, I'm into this, because it looks kinda of fun to play all those classic NES games and do little speedruns on it and stuff like that. Stuff that I normally wouldn't do, but because it has that Nintendo charm and some of the old games I grew up with, I'm actually gonna be interested in. Yes, edition. Yeah, on I'm Nintendo in. Switch, July 18th. Now, here was the big one for me. This was the major moment that I was like, Oh my God, the leaks were real. This is happening. And I gotta say, this is up there as one of the top things in this Direct that I was the most excited about. And that is for Fantasian Neo Dimension by the father of Final Fantasy and Mistwalker. And why is this game so exciting? What's the big deal about this? Where the only place to play it for a long time was on Apple Arcade. And I did download all that just to play it because I wanted to see what it's all about. So good, so good. Finally in console. Finally. Skills are the ticket to winning battles. The claim to fame with this game is all of the backgrounds are all hand created. And I'm not talking about in a computer. They're all handmade. They're models. Yeah. So you have your characters running around on these beautiful models. And they scan these in and they look gorgeous. And somebody actually made them. And that is the thing that sells me the most here. When I saw that, I was like, Oh my god. I just love the handcrafted feel, and I like the combat. The combat looks really exciting, and I can't wait to finally get this. Hopefully, hopefully, we get a physical copy. Come on, Magic! Now, the biggest game was shown, and I was like, I cannot believe it's finally here. They're finally giving me what I truly want, and that is Hello Kitty Island Adventure. No, no, it wasn't. Oh my gosh, Hello Kitty. Oh my god. I thought it was very cutesy and fun for kids and I thought this is definitely up there for my daughter. Now here's one that I didn't expect to be excited about and I was really excited about it. It's strange and that is for a Looney Tunes sports game. And you'd be like, have you lost your mind? Why? Do you know why? I grew up with Looney Tunes like a lot of us out there. My entire childhood was spent watching Looney Tunes. And then now, kids are watching modern day cartoons and things like that, and Looney Tunes has kind of been pushed away. It's kind of forgotten about. Can you believe that? This is cool. It's, it's, it's cool to see Looney Tunes uh, characters again. You never see these anymore. And to see it make a return, even in a sports game, I was like, oh, it's nice to see all these classic characters back in a game again. And in this sports game, count me in. And it was just so nostalgic to see Looney Tune characters. I was like, oh my God, where did these come from? What's up, Doug? And then they showed Farmagia. And I'm like, wait a sec, what is this? I thought it was a Monster Hunter simulation game. I thought it was like some like farming thing or something. I'm like, what is going on? It's kind of strange looking, kind of interesting, but you know, Farmagia, make of it as you will. Now the next one is Donkey Kong Country Returns in high definition, coming in 2025. And I know this is like a port, but that's okay. Is that, oh my God, is that Donkey Kong? So, what the heck? Donkey Kong Country Returns, originally released on the Wii system, is barreling onto Nintendo Switch in HD. 
Whoa. My wife and me, we love Donkey Kong Country. We grew up with that game. So to get a high definition port brought over to the Switch so we can easily play it that way, count me in. And I gotta say, I was looking at it getting all nostalgic again, going, God, we love Donkey Kong Country. In fact, I walked out of the room and I talked to my wife. I'm like, dude, that's Donkey Kong Country. She said, what? She didn't even know about any old ports or anything like that. So she was really excited. Now, here was the actual really big moment for me when they showed, I couldn't believe it, I'm like, finally, they showed Dragon Quest 3, the high definition 2D remake. Oh my god. Oh my god. And I'm like, here it is, it's actually here. And I'm like, oh. Wait a second, all of those rumors, all of those rumors about there being three games were just rumors, it's not, it's not true. So I sat there looking and I'm like, oh, I guess there's no other games. Is it the trilogy? No, it's Dragon Quest 3 HD Remake. Journey with allies. No, this looks good, I was expecting one and two as well. Nintendo Switch. So, so part one and two are not coming as well, that's interesting. There's so many rumors that parts one and two were coming out too. Huh, fascinating. Wait. No. No! Oh my God. Oh my God. It's true, we're getting it. Oh my God. One and two are coming out as well. Oh my God, what a surprise. And then, they showed all of the games, and I'm like, oh my god, we are actually getting the trilogy. We're getting the trilogy. And I couldn't be more excited because they brought out 1, 2, and 3 on the Switch, and they were mobile ports, and I did a review about that a couple years ago, and I did not particularly love them at all. Even though my wife went and finished Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3 that way. She finished all of those games on the Switch that way. And I said at the time, Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3, these are classics, these are staples, these are the foundations of RPGs in Japan. They needed to be honored more. They needed a, a real honoring, and they've gotten that now. And to get 1, 2, and 3 together, the trilogy, I mean, if you've never played a Dragon Quest game, play 11, and then play these games. For sure, and play eight as well, and you can list them all. But this is a great place to start, and they've really honored them well. And they showed Luigi's Mansion 2, high definition. We knew this was coming out, it's coming out at the end of the month. And I saw it and I'm like, yeah, I knew this would be in the Nintendo Direct. I'm picking it up. I'm a Luigi's Mansion fanatic. I love Luigi's Mansion. So I'll be definitely picking that up, putting it into the collection. Okay, this next one got me really in the feels and in the nostalgia, big time. And I didn't expect it. And it's one that a lot of people will be like, what? Uh, so they're, you know, bringing a lot of older games to the N Nintendo 64 online. Turok, the Dinosaur Hunter was shown. Turok, Dinosaur Hunter. Wait, oh my god, that's a blast in the past. I have a lot of fond memories going over to Rob's place when we first got our N64s. And I remember they rented Turok. And at the time, at the time for anybody who was there, Turok was a huge game. Like, no pun intended, it was a big deal game. We were running around the jungles going, Look at these graphics. I can't believe how good this looks. Like, wow, the future is here with the Nintendo 64. And we just love Turog, the Dinosaur Hunter. What a classic game. Now, this one shocked me. I was like, what, what is this? Metal Slug, Attack Reloaded. I'm like, what is this? It's like a 2D style of game with all sorts of characters from the Metal Slug series. You can fight against other people online and it's available today. I need to go and see what that was all about. I'm like, what? You can also slug it out with other players in online battles. What the heck? I'm so excited that we're revisiting the Metal Slug series so much now. You know, we got tactics coming out and we have this new game. So I can't wait to see what this is all about. They showed Phantom Brave, the lost hero, running around, very cutesy, some tactical combat going on. I don't particularly think it's my thing, but I think a lot of people might really enjoy this game. I really like the cutesiness of it though. Now this was one that I was not expecting and this made the direct for me as well. I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh Capcom, what are you gonna do for us? What's happening now? And they showed Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics and I was sitting there going, oh my God, they're gonna take us for a ride. And I can't believe it because 
I love those old arcade games and the punishes on there. Marvel vs. Capcom 2's in there. We got a lot of games in this collection in one anthology. And I couldn't be more happier. I really crossed my fingers for a physical copy. Please, Capcom. Please. We will all buy it. And you know, it's funny. I'm much more of a Street Fighter guy, but the Marvel vs. Capcom series now is so nostalgic and it just reminds me of my childhood and, and all those old arcade games back again. I couldn't be more thrilled and I want to say thank you Capcom, 100%. A physical copy of this, 100%. Now next up, all of a sudden I see Link and I'm like, what's going on with Link? I'm like, what's going on with his design? He's got the Hyrule and Shield. What? What? Oh, he looks like, oh wait, he looks like Link's Awakening Link. And I'm like, we're not playing as Link. Is this a Zelda game where you play Zelda? I knew, and then all of a sudden he starts to fade away. And I'm like, we're playing a Zelda. We're playing a Zelda. It's, it's finally gonna happen. Because there's been so many rumors and so many people have been talking about it over the years. Like, oh, you'll get to play Zelda in a brand new game. And that game is The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Zelda can create echoes of items that she's seen throughout Hyrule. So she can create tables and chairs to solve puzzles, to fight enemies with, and she can also generate enemies. Monsters have different abilities, so choose the one you want to create based on the situation. Oh, that looks cool. It looks cool. It's just this difference. After all. I really enjoy the creativity that's going on here. And a lot of people will be like, oh no, I don't want to play as Zelda. I just want to play as Link. Don't worry, Nintendo's always working on the next Zelda game. So we'll obviously be getting next generation Zelda games on their next platform and all that. And I was kind of okay with this to shake it up a little bit. And I thought it was really creative and really interesting. I thought I'd really like to run around this world and the world looked big. The world really looked big and I thought this is kind of a fun little concept and it is kind of unique and something that I'll definitely try out. Now they showed Horizon Adventures Lego and I gotta admit something, I don't wanna be such a downer here, but it just doesn't do it for me. I mean, Aloy is fine as a character. In Lego, it's okay. In a game, it's fine. It's not really my thing. I, you know, for Horizons to go into Lego, I guess a lot of people might like this sort of thing, uh, but it definitely wasn't for me. Now they showed Stray, and I love Stray. I played on the PS5. It was like a game I'd always wished for. I'd always been saying, I want a cat RPG or a cat platforming action game. And we got it with Stray, and I played it, and it was whimsical. It was really, really good. They really knocked it out of the park. And I don't often say this, but watching and looking at the port going from, you know, the PS5 and all of that to the Nintendo Switch, it really looked good. And I don't often say that about some ports where I think they really put a lot of work into this and they've really pushed the Switch to the max. And I think it really looks excellent. For Actually looks pretty good on Nintendo Switch. And stealthily squeeze into tight spaces. Surprising how much you push this machine. To make your I think the Switch port is looking really good at this point. And they show Tales of the Shire. And I gotta say, it looked okay. Uh, it's not my thing at all. I'll, I'll definitely not be playing it. It's not my, my my game at all. It looks just very average for me and something that I, I'm not really interested in. And something else I didn't think I'd be interested in, they showed Romancing Saga 2, a remake. And I'm like, okay, I, I do like the original Romancing Saga. And I saw this and I'm like, okay, it's a remake. And I'm like, okay, the characters look pretty good. And I'm like, okay, combat looks good. I'm like, okay, I'm sold. I'm, I'm interested in this. I'm gonna play this for sure. It actually looks pretty good. The one thing about the Romancing Saga series, lots of combat. So we'll be expecting that going in, there'll be a ton of combat, but that's cool. And you know what? Romancing Saga coming back, remake, I'm interested. Feel the pain! And then it finally happened. After seven years, I picked up my Lucky Metroid here. I'm bringing out my Lucky Metroid here. Shrouded in secrecy. I rubbed it a little bit because finally I saw the lettering on the screen and I'm like, here we go, Metroid Prime 4, finally shown. Oh my God. Oh, after seven years. And it's called Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. Oh my God. And I gotta say, I was beyond happy. I couldn't believe it. I was like, it's finally here after so long. And then they say 2025 and I'm like, Oh my God, we'll be beyond waiting till 2025. Of course, 2025. Of course. Let's make it eight years. It very much reminded me and looked like uh, Metroid Prime Remastered. 
and that's not a bad thing, but it just goes to show where they're at with the Nintendo hardware, and I, I, I quite liked it. I thought, this looks really excellent. I don't believe it. But it, it gets me thinking, it really gets me thinking, are we gonna get, and this is, I'm a gambling man, I'm gonna gamble here, are we gonna get an upgraded port to the next Nintendo console successor? Are we gonna get that? I don't know, but maybe, maybe. So obviously they're gonna release it on Switch to you know the entire user base, which is absolutely massive, and everybody's gonna buy that. And, and then for people who buy the next console, they can get an enhanced version of Metroid Prime Beyond. Kinda makes sense, it's a Nintendo strategy. We'll see if that pans out. And if we just get it on Nintendo Switch, that'll just be great too. I can't wait to play this game, and my God, when I saw it, and I heard some of that music, and saw some of the landscapes, I'm like, yeah, Metroid Prime is back, and I'm interested, and I really want to play it. So what did you guys think of Metroid Prime 4 Beyond? Did it live up to your Beyond expectations? Let me know down below. And what did you think of this Nintendo Direct? Was it super amazing? Did it blow you away? Or did it direct you to the door? Let me know down below. And I gotta say, I really love this Nintendo Direct. We got some Dragon Quest, we got some Capcom love, we got some Fantasian, we got a Zelda game, and we actually got a Zelda game. So I was really happy to see all this with Metroid Prime 4 rounding it all up. I was really blown away by this Nintendo Direct. And quite literally, we're looking at the end of this console. These are like the end games for the Nintendo Switch at this point. And I was just like, oh my God, we're actually at that moment. So guys, let me know what you thought down below. So I was blown away by this. I can't wait to play these games in the upcoming future. Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. I'll be waiting into 2025. So anyways, guys, until next time.